Today, we're going to talk about our paper, AgBots 2.0, Weeding Denser Fields with Fewer Robots. As we can see from this graphic, within the continental United States, herbicide resistance has grown radically between 1990 and 2016. Crop losses due to herbicide resistant weeds may climb to as high as $100 billion per year when chemical control is lost. This shows that mechanical control is the only evolutionarily sustainable weeding method. Many companies such as Eco Robotics, NIO, and Turtle have created weeding robots. However, this area presents several key challenges, including the autonomy of weeding robots, their cost, the ease of use of the robotic weeding system, as well as its ability to operate under an occluded crop canopy. Our solution for mechanical weeding includes a team of autonomous weeding robots and maintenance barns, leveraging both local and remote data sources. Here, we can see our robotic prototype autonomously navigating down the row, as well as successfully detecting and differentiating both crops and weeds. In this work, we've created a coordination strategy for robotic weeding. Each robot only sees its row and the two on either side, can spend two minutes in each 0.8 meter squared cell, can weed plants three inches tall or less, receives a reward equal to the maximum height of weeds within a cell. The critical design variables are the number of robots and their associated cost, the speed of weeding, the maximum height of plants robots can weed. In the bottom left corner, we see our robot prototype and mechanical weeding apparatus. This was used as a basis to determine our simulation parameters. In this graph, we've plotted the total reward or total maximum height within all the cells in the field divided by the number of robots. We've plotted this against time, showing the mean and standard deviation for several coordinated algorithms as well as the naive lawnmower pattern. We can see that using coordination, we're able to outperform the lawnmower pattern for every algorithm. Here, we've compared the old algorithm using Gittin's index to the new algorithm using EVAR. We've plotted the total reward at the terminal time in the simulation for each parameter pair, number of agents and seed bank density, or number of seeds within the soil for each cell in the simulated field. What we can see is with the new algorithm, with eight agents, we're able to succeed for fields with significantly higher seed bank densities than the old algorithm. Now we repeat these experiments for both the fully observed case and the case of the naive lawnmower pattern. In the case of the lawnmower pattern, with nine agents, we're able to succeed for any seed bank density tested whereas with less, we can't succeed for any seed bank density tested. In the fully observable case, with eight agents, we're able to succeed for almost the entire range of seed bank densities tested, and with seven, we can't succeed for any seed bank density tested. This shows that eight agents is the critical number, above which even the lawnmower pattern succeeds. Thank you.